Holy shit, we're on YouTube and we are doing some vlogs. Uh, we are going to go through what it's like to be a traveling fit pro, online coach, in Dubai, wherever I go in the next couple of months and go from there. This is the new setup, I'm going to take you through a day, how things are, what I do up to a day-to-day -day basis, some information as we go through and just tackle some problems as we go. So, check out. So it would not be a starting of a vlog from a fit pro without there being some level of food in here. So being super super lazy at the moment and not liking to cook at all, I'm one of these guys who lives in Dubai or does delivery twice a day uh, and gets what he needs from it. But that's only for this week, next week we'll be back on kind of moving into a dieting phase slightly for a small space of time. Did finish a dieting spot maybe around uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, but it was only for, for a small diet break and then moving back down into getting, getting leaner again. Uh, the goal was always to kind of get as lean as I can to then go into a muscle building phase uh, for the duration of like 2022 to really put on some tissue uh, and start and stop dieting for a long time. So an easy way to do this when we're in Dubai, we always get Bok Bok. So Bok Bok is the easiest kind of Nando'sy version of Dubai. It's probably cheaper than actually buying chicken and veggies in the UK. So when you are, when I am traveling, uh, the, the first port of call will always be something like Deliveroo or looking for a Nando style thing. You get your protein in, it's easy, you know, chicken breast, uh, you've got your wraps, you'll have your carbs in there, and then you'll have your veggies if you need them as well with the rices, the potatoes, or whatever you need. So for me, it is, today is uh, 200 grams, 250 grams of chicken with the, the, the Nando's-y sauce, and then add the edamame beans at the bottom, which is here. The, the bok bok does come with uh, bread, so I always kind of have a little bit of the, 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 the kind of Lebanese bread that comes. I've already ate my portion of it already because I, I love fucking bread. So we're going to crack that in the microwave, get on, get on with the day. We have a, uh, some more video content to be published for uh, autonomy. We're going to go and then head to the gym. We've got a client podcast which is going to be really interesting we try and do these on a week to week month to month basis uh, where we kind of share our clients journeys through the form of spotify uh, to help help people through the challenges that they have but equally um, get them inspired to kind of come on board with autonomy as well so that one's with jenny later so we'll check that out i'll do some film and filming whilst i'm filming with her and then after that i'll be training normally I train in the mornings but I've, I've just been super, super busy this morning and been completely out of routine. I've had friends here uh, for the last couple of days. I've got my mum coming on Wednesday uh, and I've only just come back from a, a, a basically a wedding in Cyprus on Friday, which was just an absolute nightmare uh, in terms of the travel schedule, but it was well, well worth it. I ended up being stuck in Budapest and, and Cyprus for a couple of hours because um, they didn't let me into Tel Aviv. Uh, in Tel Aviv, they, they allow you only if you're a resident to make a change over there. I didn't realize that. didn't really look at the internet too well when I was looking at it. But we were able to get back uh, probably 22 hours of flying on Saturday. So that was, a, that was still something I'm recovering from. We went straight into some events where, where I'm working with the OTE. And that was boozy, very, very boozy. 4 or 5 a.m. finishes every single day. Moving finally back into a routine, I got hit with the Rona, uh, so I basically lost my sense of taste and smell the last couple of days, but we're feeling much better, uh, and we're going to go and crack out some, some training now, so a nice, easy, light session, and we'll record some of the sets. I'm trying to get back into that, that kind of higher threshold of, of moving some tin, uh, but there's been some things that have stacked against me with the travel, and then moving back in and feeling pretty shitty about myself, so you'll see the week ahead with my mum. You'll see everything that's going on while we're here, enjoying the festivities. We get to see her a couple of times a year. We fly her out to wherever I am normally when I'm flying. Uh, last couple of years, she's been to like, you know, she's used me as a bit of a piggyback. She's been, you know, she's been to Australia. She's been to Barbados. She's been to, um, we went to uh, Greece together. Um, she's been basically, you know, if I, when I traveled in, in 2019 for 52 weeks, 52 cities, uh, I think she traveled to maybe seven of them herself so quite a lot of travel she loves it so we'll get her in dubai she loves dubai you know she loves a lavish style, lifestyle she likes those little bits of finer finer things in life so we'll get that and then uh, at the end of the week uh, i've got another friend coming next week as well so we'll get all of this uh, in the vlog and uh, but first i'm gonna crack up my chicken eat that as best as i can and then we'll crack on with some work Why are you going to watch my videos? Well, in the last five years, I've been an online coach, I transferred from the gym floor, and just, I loved I loved PT, I loved it, but it's super, super difficult from working 6am in the mornings all the way to 9pm at night, and really having no social life. 
So when they transitioned online, I worked for a company that allowed me to just work with clients. So during that time period, I was living in London and I did not want to be there. The rent was probably extortionate for a room. I was living in Ladbroke Grove, not the best area. And I had a rent of around about £1,100 for a room. I was sitting in Barcelona with my mum because we went on a little holiday in 2018. And she says, why don't you just work from here? I said, what, what do you mean? She's like, why don't you work from Barcelona? I'm like, I could do, you know, Messi's here, Camp Nou. I like Sangria, I like Paella. I like the lifestyle, it's warm. So it just got me thinking and getting my cogs turning. Fast forward two months, I'd given my notice in. I'd already been to the Ukraine to see how that was. If you don't want to go to a place that is fucking Baltic, don't go to the Ukraine. Kiev's lovely, but just way too hot. Cold, sorry. So fast forward that, in January, I packed my bags, little suitcase, and I went traveling. I was, what everyone is, uh, prescribes and, and says it is now is like, you're a nomad. You know, no name and address. So what I did was I traveled from country to country. I got super, super excited. You know, I was helping people, I was working from my laptop, and I was able to do that and just go from city to city to city and live this lavish laptop lifestyle. Before it was a laptop lifestyle thing. There wasn't many people doing this. Now, circa, circa COVID, circa uh, people moving digitally, digitally, everyone's doing it. Now for me, 20, 2019 was one of those years what made and break me. I was loving what I was doing. I was having this situation where I was, I was freedom to the max. Travel here, do this, do that. You know, in the whole year, I think I did five wonders of the world, traveled 52 cities, and was able to, you know, do the things that everyone had dreamed of, like sit on a beach and do work, or, you know, go to the mountains in Switzerland, or, you know, go and go absolutely take multiple pills from, on a night out, come in, sniff a gram of coke, and then go and do check ins. Like, I was living the dream. Sorry, man. And I did all these things, and it was beautiful. As I came to the back end of 2019, I started to feel what it was like to the negatives of, of this laptop lifestyle. And that's not what I want to show you, but that's what I want you to understand. If you're watching this and you are a fit pro and you're gunning for that laptop lifestyle and you think it's going to solve all your problems, watch the, watch the rest of these videos. It's a fantastic way of life. You'll see the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, but there are commonalities that I've, lessons I've learned that has made me the person I am today, but able to function whilst traveling, running a business, a six-figure business, and been able to actually not lose your marbles. So we're gonna take you through that, and how we did that, and that'll be in a later episode. But that's why you should watch these videos, because we're gonna show you what it's like to really run a business whilst being a fit pro, whilst traveling the world. Because, fuck it, why not? So I'm gonna finish my chicken. It's too hot at the moment, microwaves. When you go to different countries, microwaves seem to just have the mind of their own. Even though it says a thousand watts on a microwave, you can never trust it. Two minutes on a microwave should be absolutely fine for a chicken set in our maze, but it feels like my hand is burning. I haven't got asbestos hands like most people. So I'm going to trick this off, I'm going to head off and uh, crack on with some work. You might be thinking, well, this isn't the gym. Well, yeah. So I decided I'm not going to go to the gym today. COVID and having no taste and no smell is still probably an issue. So I'm just going to take the day off to rest and recuperate. We've got a nice little pool here, and I'm going to start reading my book. The book that I've got and I'm just continue reading is Happy Sexy Millionaire, which is a really, really good book uh, because A, I want to be a millionaire, and two, is because I want to know how to be happy and sexy. So, uh, been a really, really good read by Stephen Bartlett. Uh, I'll continue to read that, but no gym for me today. It was just crazy uh, how I thought I was going to be okay. Then I just was about to get ready to go for the gym, and it just never, ever happened. 
Um, not for the want of trying, but I just think you know sometimes you got to rest and recuperate a little bit more uh, when you are starting to sick and ill um, to be able to then go forward and make a good session out of it. So I'm just going to go and chill here and uh, and and do nothing for the rest of the day apart from the podcast. It is the luxury of owning your own business and working from a laptop. You can literally work from anywhere, and I'll be working from the uh, the pool. As you can see, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, no, it's it's massive. Uh, I think that environment that you have, it, it ultimately is a predictor on whether you're going to do great or whether you're going to have a lot of friction. Like, you know, we speak about it a lot, don't we? It's like, if people that are around you have that positive influence, then you're really, really blessed. You know, you, you, got, you see those people that don't have that positive influence, those parents that are kind of resistant to helping or, um, you know, the, the traditional Indian food is not like always part of their, their, their food intake so that when they change something about what they do, or they have something that is a little bit different than the norm, then there's a lot, a lot of kickback, which is not always the most positive thing for, for some people who are unmotivated or unconfident. So to be able to have that family, that work, that coaching, that, that kind of puts you in, and helps you to uh, survive the process, which is hard at diet, is, it is hard to do. You know, it's really, really, really important. You know, what 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 type of stuff does your your fat like I know that your mum like helped you with the cooking and stuff like that, but like what other stuff have you noticed during the journey that they've helped you with, like mentally or physically? Um as well as taking my progress pictures for me every week. My mum's always there. She just knows every Sunday at about ten o'clock when I wake up she's gonna be there with her camera to take a picture of me. Um <laughs> What a day. Didn't really do that much today, but I feel absolutely fucking exhausted. That podcast with Jenny was so fucking good. We do these with most of our clients that allow us to kind of, allow them to reflect on their journeys and see what they've done. You know, Jenny's lost 20 kilos, easy, and is now staying in shape for life. You know, so her ability to, the learnings that she's had, the things that she's done has been super critical uh, to her long-term journey, you know, with what we do, autonomy. But the goal is literally to kick these people out of our coaching process and never need us again and, and provide something with that long-term lifestyle solution. So to see that, A, she's lost 20 kilos, B, she's in much, much better physical and mental health. You know, she spoke about how her journey was equally physical as it was mental and that you know she's come out of a deep dark place and, and, and struggled with mental health issues before and now she's she's not in that place because of the physical journey that she went on you know it's also nice as well when you hear clients talk about the the process that you've had and the things that i've said to her and that have really really resonated so it's been a, it's been one of those feel good type of days where i'm feeling pretty shitty about uh, the cold that i've got and not training and stuff but we're nearly finishing the day now i'm actually going to go and uh, go for a walk get into the heat uh, of Dubai because it's still warm and it's like what 9 p.m. at night or something no it's uh, 6 6 p.m. still really really warm so we'll get out we'll get, in, get some sunshine sunshine we'll get in some uh, some heat and then tomorrow is a new day we start the day again we're training all the lovely stuff that we got but what a feel good day those type of stuff always stay with you it's always 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 the pleasure of our day to, to kind of share talk to a client that has done amazing things and, and, and achieved you know more than probably what they expected to you know so when you're looking at one of the things that jenny spoke about was how she's now managing calorie intake you know a large thing with clients and what they come on board with 
Uh, a lot of coaches make this mistake is that they don't teach the clients the specifics of calories differences to like just quote unquote being healthy. You know, she spoke about a time in which you know she thought that like, a chicken Caesar salad was the most healthiest thing on the menu that was going to reach her goals. She kept choosing this chicken Caesar salad, and it ended up you know not, her not losing weight week on week. Now, there's, there's a large disparity between what healthy is and what low calorie is. And when clients get to a point where they're able to understand low calorie versus healthy, so you know, so an avocado is really really healthy, but it's 350 calories for a full one. And like nuts and seeds and these things have super high nutritional benefits, but they are simply still calories at the end of the day. So she said that there's a large turning point that had her, which was when she was able to now think low calorie as opposed to healthy. So she was going to Nando's and getting the chicken pitta wrap or chicken pitta and being able to get that instead of something that was you know 300, 400 calories more because she felt thought it was healthy. And whilst healthy and the choices of healthy will lead you into a good stead long term, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get fat loss. It doesn't mean necessarily you're going to achieve the goals that you want. So focusing on that big thing, that big rock of nutrition, which is how many calories are you eating on a day to day basis, will lead you to getting better results every single time. And the clients that we have that just eat, want to eat healthy or they just don't, they want to put some mindfulness to it, they end up getting you know, all right results. But the ones that start looking at like a budget, they start looking at like their finances, where they're, how much is going in, how much is going out, what is it, the thing that I'm eating right now, how many calories does that have? They're the, thing, they're the people that make the most amount of change over the short term and the long term because they build up that education knowledge of, okay, cool, this is 500 calories, this is 300 calories, this is 800 calories. And when that education cog starts turning in their brain, they get to think about what they're, what they're eating and, and how does that fit in with their day. So, you know, Jen did that really well. And over time, she started learning that low calorie versus healthy. And guess what? Her results improved too because she stayed within that budget of calories that she had. She stayed close to those numbers. And it's one of those, you don't want to um, reprimand people for making healthier decisions, but ultimately if there's a goal specific to, uh, to her, the goal, you know, she wants to lose weight. Getting healthy choices isn't gonna always uh, reproduce results. So if you do have that ability, you are a person who eats healthily but doesn't know why they're not getting the results, then look at the calories that they're in your food and you'll be really, really surprised. You know, instead of taking that notion of I'm just gonna eat healthy now, okay, it's like ask yourself the question, how many calories does this motherfucker have in? How many calories am I supposed to be eating? And what are the differences in the daytime? And once you get that spot on, you'll be in a really good position to be able to make the progress that you want. So, it's time for me to uh, get a shower, because I haven't had one all day, a messy bastard. And I'm gonna go get changed, go out for a walk, probably go for some shisha, I need to go and get some food. I haven't got any deliverer, so it's probably gonna be a nice little takeaway chicken cheese. Uh, for me, uh, I'll go to a restaurant. It's a, it's a Monday night, or it's a Sunday night here, which is the first day of the week. So I have this rule where, you know, it's Sunday to Thursday, which is your normal week. You act like it's a Monday to Friday. You act like if you're going to a restaurant, you get the same very similar things to what you get when you're at home. So for me, there'll be some meat, and there'll be some veggies, and some carbs, and that's what I'm gonna do again today. So I've had the bok bok for lunch. I've had a coffee this morning. And that's all I've had, so probably roughly, I don't know, maybe, I've had about 800 calories today. We'll have another one of those. Um, we'll get back into not eating like a dickhead, which has definitely been the last six to seven days. Um, so back on course with uh, all of the travel, all of the moving parts, all of the enjoyments, the festivities. Uh, you know, a nice little couple of days before my mum comes and ruins it anyway. So we'll get that involved. Um, I think we're gonna go to Bosporus, so I'll show you Bosporus. And then we're out for shisha. So catch you in a bit. Well, I'm on the way home from uh, Bosporus and I have made the first error of vlogging, of vlogging. I forgot to record what, what I actually ate, so I'm going to get better at that, but it is over now for the first vlog. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe, uh, and then on to the next episode. See you soon.